our final sermon of the year. And it's fitting that as we have two more days left of this, I guess we have today and tomorrow left of 2018, that um, I want us to, I just have a brief message for you today, and it's about a new year. When people say to you, Happy New Year, what do they basically say? I hope you have a good year. I hope you have a happy year. Aren't you glad last year's almost over? What you really are basically giving someone a blessing when you say Happy New Year. It's just not, you know, it's just not another day, but it's like Happy New Year. You're speaking a blessing over them. When we say that, we, we need to understand that there's power in our words. And sometimes we say things to people that are like, oh, another year. Well, that's that's a blessing, isn't it? You know, we, we, we need to be careful that we bless people in things that we say. Every year we celebrate. People stay up late. Uh, most people stay up late and they celebrate bringing in the new year. One of the most famous New Year celebrations is at Times Square where they drop the big crystal ball at New Year's. But you know, there are other ways people celebrate uh, the New Year's. Matter of fact, let me share a couple of them with you here. Um, a watermelon is dropped in Indiana at New Year's. Uh, pine cones are dropped in Arizona. In Florida, they drop a big beach ball. In Florida, what, in, in Georgia, what do you think they drop? Beaches. They drop beaches. They drop a big peach in Georgia. But I think my favorite is in Plymouth, Wisconsin. They drop a, a, a thousand pound block of cheese uh, in, in Wisconsin. So what person wouldn't want to stay up and watch that? The truth is each of us have expectations when a new year comes, don't we? We all have expectations. We, we all are just believing in something that may not have happened in the past year. Um, the comedian Ellen says... An optimist is someone who stays up to midnight to see in the new year. A pessimist is someone who stays up to midnight to make sure the old year goes away. <laughs> Oprah says, cheers to the new year and another chance to get it right this time. I think we all want to do that, don't we? We just want to get it right. We want this year to be right. There are three things I want to, I want to give you as you enter into the new year that might be helpful um, in approaching it and stepping out of this year. Because it really is two things that we're doing. We're stepping out. Hopefully, we're stepping out. But see, if we're not careful, we carry things in with us that we shouldn't carry in with us. But we're stepping into something new. Um, the first thing I want to share with you is your attitude. What is your attitude toward the new? Um, I don't know if any of you uh, know, but in a, every airplane has a, an instrument called an attitude. Um, and you know what it determines in the plane? It determines its altitude. It's, it's an attitude that they have you, it tells you what your altitude is, you're going up or you're going down. And that is kind of a prophetic thing if you think about it. Our attitude does determine our altitude. It determines how we enter into this new year will determine how it's going to be. If you go into 2019 believing it's not going to be any different to 2018, I guarantee you, you're right. It will be no different. If you, don't, if you don't have anything to look forward to in 2019, then you probably have nothing to look forward to in 2019. The one thing I believe our hope, our attitude should be based on is hope. I think that's what we all desire, isn't it? We all hope that next year's better. We all hope that things are going to be better. We all hope. The Bible says in, um, in, in, in the Psalms, it says, or Proverbs, it says that hope deferred makes the heart grow weary or sick. It's Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred, hope put off, makes the heart sick. But it goes on to say, but a desire fulfilled is like a living tree, a tree of life. Don't hold back your hope for this year. Hope great things. Hope for things that you think might just be impossible. Hope, because there are certain things that we thought were going to change in 2018 that didn't change. We'll hope they do next year. <clears throat> there are certain things you thought you were going to get this past year that you didn't get. Well, hope that you'll get that this year. God wants you to have that. Don't allow your hope to be deferred because it'll make your heart sick. And that's what we were this, this writer was trying to tell us. Don't put off being hopeful. So if we can walk into 2019 with anything, our attitude should be what? Hopeful. My prayer for you is that your attitude is hopeful. Look forward to good things in this coming year. 
A wife came into the bathroom and saw her husband standing on the scales and he was sucking at his stomach real tight. And she says, you know, that doesn't help. He says, oh, yes, it does. I can see the numbers when I do this. He said, be hopeful. A little boy asked his father what his New Year's resolution was. And he said, son, this year I'm going to do everything possible to make your mother very happy. The little boy looked at his mother and said, well, what's your resolution going to be? And she said, to do everything possible to make sure your father keeps his resolutions. <laughs> See, sometimes we need help. We need help with our plans and with our goals and with our hopeful things. We need to be encouragers of one another. You know, you, you keep hoping this person's going to change, and they just don't. Just, well, hope. Hope. Encourage them. Be their fan. Don't just shake your head and say, well, it's always going to be this way. Politics, it's always going to be this way. But the economy, it's always going to You know what? That does no good. Be hopeful. Be positive. Be, believe in things that matter. Be hopeful. Our attitude will have everything to do with 2019. If you're looking for joy in 2019, look, make sure you look in the right place. If you're looking for peace in 2019, make sure you look in the right place. If you're looking for happiness in 2019, make sure you look in the right place. We often look in the wrong places, things that are going to make us happy, things that are going to give us joy, things that are going to give us peace. And if we're looking in the wrong place, it's not going to happen. Our hope is found in Christ. That's our hope. There are two things, I promise you, there are two things waiting for all of us in the new year. One is evil and one is good. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, he says, the enemy who's waiting, he's prowling, he's, he's looking for us. He's waiting right there. He's here today. Oh, he's not here. He's out there today. But he's just waiting. And in 2019, he's prowling around, the Bible says. Jesus said, the enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's all the enemy has in store for you. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. And he wants to destroy you. He wants to do that in your family. He wants to do that in your career. He wants to do that in your health. He wants to do that in your attitude. But Jesus goes on to say, I have a have come that you might have life. And that you might have it in abundance. So as you enter into this new year, may your attitude, don't, don't give the devil a foothold. Don't, don't, don't walk into it saying, well, it's probably going to be another bad year. The enemy's like, stole that joy. Rob that joy. Kill that dream. Look to Christ and understand that it's in Christ that we find hope. If you find yourself feeling hopeless in the new year, Check and see what you're looking at and what your attitude is. So number one, our attitude going into the new year. I, I challenge you. I challenge you to be hopeful. Expect the best in the new year. Expect the best in people. That's how, that's how Christ feels about us. He expects the best. And when we fail, he picks us up, he forgives us, if we confess our sins, and he encourages us to move on. We need to be little Christian ambassadors and doing the same thing for other people. Be hopeful. Toward the people in your life. Be encouraging to the people in your life. And you might be surprised how many encouraging people you'll attract. The second thing that you need to ask yourself is, what part are you going to play in this new year? What part are you going to play in this change? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it's a scripture many of you have heard of hundreds and hundreds of times. But it's one that we need to be reminded of as we enter into the new year. Paul says, therefore, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has begun. Now, there's a lot of words, there's a lot of you know, words in that statement right there, but there are two I want you to see. Because this is where you have an input, where you can make a change. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's the whole key to that scripture. You can't put the old behind you and behold the new has begun if you're not in Christ. You can know of Christ, but not be in Christ. I can know of love, but not be in 
love. You see, there's a difference. Sometimes people say, are you in or are you out? Are you in? And, and you, there's a difference, isn't there? You can tell if someone's in. I'm all in. Well, let's see. If we're all in with Christ, that's how the old is put away and the new begins. Because being in something is very intimate. It's, it's, very, it's very personal. It's not just something you know about. It's something you're committed to. It's something you don't give up on. It's something that when things get hard, you don't just bail. You're not in, if that's the case. When you're in, you stay. When you're in, you believe. When you are in, you hope. When you are in, you're in. Got it? As you enter into this new year, don't allow yourself to fall into the schemes of the enemy. Because they're out there. There are snares, there are traps, there are, there are anything, you can bring your mind to anything to discourage you. It's just another year, just like that. That's, that's the enemy's plan. But it says to those of us who are in Christ, our hope is not deferred. It, 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 our hope is, our desires are fulfilled when you're in it. Many people just say they're in it, but they really are just of it. You know, we're just, I'm just of the church. No, are you in? Are you really committed to the ministry of this church? Or are you just of it? You know, eh, the church on Sundays, I'm of it. You know, I, I'm about it. But I'm not really committed to it. But with Christ, with the people in your life, you need to be in. They need to know you're in. And that you're not just going to bail when things get difficult. You're not just going to get discouraged. You need to be the encourager in your circle. Amen? You need to be the one that walks into the room and people light up. You know, they don't look for a way to get out. You, you need to be that person. And none of us are that, per, that, that those people, right? We just know a lot of them. But we need to make sure that when we walk into a room, it's not all about me. It's about you. Some people walk into a room and say, here I am. Others walk into a room and say, well, there you are. Be that person. Be the person that walks into a room and says, oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, I've missed you. How have you been? You know, learn people's names, you know, and, you know, and let them know you're in. And most importantly, we need to be in Christ in this new year. Paul says in Philippians 3.13, I'll paraphrase, he says, I don't consider myself having attained it all. He says, taken hold. But he says, this one thing I do, one thing I do, actually he said two things, but he says, this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I press on. <clears throat> I press on to the high calling that's called for me. See, we can't, and he's, he's talking about a race, you can't run a race and keep looking back. You have to look at the goal in 2019, forget what is behind, the good and the bad. Sometimes the good holds us back. We keep talking about the good old days. Well, let's make some good new days. Why don't we make some new days in the new year? Forget what is behind and press on, strain on to what is ahead. There are things we need to leave behind from this past year. You don't want to take your worries into the new year. Leave them behind. You don't want to take your mistakes into the new year. Leave them behind. You don't want to take your doubts, bad experiences, regrets, unforgiveness. Leave it behind. Don't take it into the new year. Then it will be a happy new year. Studies say that 90% of the things we worry about never happen. Never happen. Yet we spend 90% of our time worrying and worrying and worrying and worrying. And, you know, I mean, the 10% that do happen, ouch. But most of them don't happen. We just worry about it. And the Bible says, be anxious about nothing. Don't, don't be anxious. It's not going to help. Worrying does not help. Whenever I leave to go somewhere, my mother always says, be careful, as if I'm going to be careless. You know, and like, Mom, really? Well, good. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be careful. 
Call me on the way. Call me when you get there. It's as if she has in her mind, something bad's going to happen. Mom, I never has. Be hopeful when we get in the car. Be hopeful when we go on a plane. Be encouraging. I don't want to have to carry this with me. The, the six-hour drive from her house back here, it's like, I know she's worrying. I know she, there's nothing I can do about it, and nothing's going to happen, but I know she's worrying. Try not to worry so much in the new year. Leave it in 18. You know, some good things happened this past year, some bad things happened this past year. They're over. Learn from them, move on. Forget about them. That's the part you can play. Now, in Christ, there are two decisions that you have to <clears throat> decide on. Number one, you need to ask Christ, what is it that you can do to make a change? What can you do? And, and pray that he will show you, okay, this I can do. And, and by his grace, try to do it. But the more challenging thing is, ask him to reveal to you what you can't change. There are just some things you can't change. Ask him for the strength to move on, to accept. You may not like it. You may not like the way this person acts. You may not like this about yourself. You, but there are certain things we can change. And by God's grace and His help, change them. But there are certain things you can't change. You just can't. I wish I was a foot tall. There are other, as foolish as that sounds, there are just as many things in your life that you can't change. You can't change. Pray that He will give you the grace to accept that. And deal with it. Deal with that person. Don't let her hold you back, but just embrace the fact, I can't change this. There, there's, a, there's a peace that comes with that. When you realize, I've got everything I can do and I can't change this. What I can change, God help me to change. But what I can't change, God help me to accept it. Help me to accept that and deal with it. Does that make sense? There, there are just certain things we've been trying to change about ourselves, about other people, for years. And it's never changed. And it's probably never going to change. Pray that God will give you a change to accept it. And just deal with it. I'm not saying lower your standards. I'm just saying be realistic. Some things are just not going to change. Finally. The last thing I want you to pray for you this year. I pray in 2019, you would find God's will for you. Not for the person sitting next to you. Not for somebody else. My prayer is that you will find God's will. Our attitude determines what kind of year we're going to have. The part we play uh, in being in Christ will determine you know, how we can have a joyful, hopeful new year. But the most important thing, if you go through 2019 and you still don't know what God's will is for your life, that's, that's a you problem. That's your fault. He's not hiding his will for us. It's right there. He, he will reveal it to you. He will reveal it to me. And my prayer is, in the new year, you will discover what that is. People make these lists of things. They make these resolutions. And the truth is, most of the resolutions are broken or forgotten about by the end of January. But, um, you know, we joined the gym, and all I have to show for it is a tag on my key. Right. Um, but there is one thing you, you need to put first. One thing you need to put first. You may say, I want to lose weight, I want to get healthier, I want to, I want to get a new job, I want to be nicer to people, I want to da 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 Great! But in Matthew 6.33 is the key. It's the key to knowing what God's will is for your life and how you can be a blessing to those around you. Seek ye first. Not later on. Not when the car breaks. Not when you, you know, the bills pile up. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all 
all these things shall be added unto you. All these resolutions you want to make, or may, maybe you do, maybe you don't. All these things you want to do in the new year, start with two. And then when you're done, say, in order for this to happen, I need to make number one to seek him first. Because if you seek him first, he will reveal his will for you. And his will for all of us is different. He has a different calling on all of our lives. than it is. Maureen's going to the Philippines uh, this month. He didn't, he didn't call me to do that. He's had me all over Africa the past few years. But people keep saying, aren't you going to the Philippines? Aren't you going to the Philippines? You know, what kind of husband are you? I mean, aren't you going to the Philippines? I'm like, I'd like to go to the Philippines, but God didn't call me. He called her to do this. And, and praise God. And we're going to support and undergird and, and do everything we can. But he, see, he has different callings in all of our lives. And it may not be to fly off to Manila. I'm not saying that, but it might be. You don't know. I'm sure she wasn't planning on going to Manila 10 years ago. And we weren't planning on going to Ghana either 20 years ago. But, you know, when you seek God's will in your life and he says, do this, you go, well, that doesn't make sense. And if we knew in what the future held for us, it would freak us out. It would freak us out if we had any idea what God has in store for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. He has wonderful things in store for us. He has amazing things in store for us. But we'll never discover them if we try to do it in the flesh and not in the Spirit. It's only done in the Spirit, and that's only done by seeking Him first. My prayer for you in 2019 is that you'll be all in with Christ. It'll change your world. It'll change your outlook. It'll change your attitude. It'll change your involvement. But it all begins with Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to ask Maureen if she'll come up here. And um, is there anything else we need to be praying for, praying about? I mean, we're certainly going to pray to send you off. Um, but other prayer requests that we need to be thinking about and looking up. We need to pray for Judy and uh, Myrna and Jesse. They're already over there. Um, and, and Manila. And Manila, yeah. In the Philippines, there was uh, an earthquake two days ago um, on, in the southern part. Oh. You probably heard there was an earthquake off the coast of the Philippines, the southern part. Um, and there were tsunami warnings, but nothing happened, so that's a good thing. So we just need to pray for protection for the Philippines. And um, Sammy, who always reads the um, warnings, safety travel warnings, um, just told me this morning that there is a travel warning um, for the Manila airport specifically. Um, but it's just a number of things that, um, there were 17 things that the U.S. TSA said they were not up to par, and so they are getting up to par. So I think by January 11th, they'll be up to par. That's Amen. my hope. <laughs> That's my hope. So, Patty? Uh, I, I'm going to be undergoing uh, cancer treatments next month, so I pray that, I'd like you to pray for me that you will be uh, successful. The devil's a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. Will you keep in touch with us? And we'll come over and pray for you if you're not feeling up to coming out. We're there for you. But, yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. This is Patty Patrick, for those of you who don't know. is a woman of God. And her husband was a saint as well. Herbert. Anybody else we need to be praying for? Well, if you want to come up and stand, wait, Patty, why don't you come up here too, please? If you want to come up here and, and stand with Maureen and Patty, and let's pray with them. If you don't want to come up, you can just sit where you are and extend a hand and join with us. But let's come just on. let's just pray. You guys, We're, Matt, the, we definitely need these Filipinos up here. Father God, we know that you're good. We know that you love us. We know that you're all powerful. Uh, we know that nothing ever happens to us that surprises you. Uh, 
But we also know that the devil's a liar and a thief and a killer, and he seeks to destroy us. So we just rebuke that. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray it over Patty right now, Father. As she's prepared for these cancer treatments, we just say that she's going to be well, that she's going to be healed, that she's that no weapon formed against her is going to prosper. And we just pray, Father, that, that you would put encouragers around her, that she would think of the good things, think on these things, things that are good, things that are positive, things that are pleasant, things that are uplifting. Don't allow the enemy to battlefield in her mind. Don't allow, we just come against that. Just say the enemy, he has to keep his hands off this godly woman. And we pray, Father, in advance, thanking you for her health, for her healing, that she would be completely restored, and that she would not suffer too greatly through these treatments. Father, we pray for Maureen as she prepares to go down and spend a few days with her mother and her sister, trying to get uh, everything in order. It couldn't be worse timing, but um, your ways are not our ways, and our ways are not your ways. So I just pray, Father, that you would go out ahead of her, uh, that you would make a path that was smooth, that they would, uh, you know what needs to be done. You know what needs to be sold and moved and taken care of and documents that need signed and bank accounts that need switched. You know all that stuff. Uh, I just pray, Father, that you would uh, make it smooth. I pray for her mother. Uh, this is not an easy time for her. I pray, Father, that you would give her peace that passes all understanding. She's. She probably feels like she's been evicted from all that she loves. But uh, she's in a good place now. She's in a better place now, Father. And she's surrounded by people who can care for her and love her. And I pray that the transition uh, goes smoother for Lucy. And that uh, she'll be back to her old self soon. I thank you for her daughters. Um, I thank you for their, their faithfulness. I thank you for their long suffering. Uh, I thank you, Lord, that um, she raised good, good girls. And now she's benefiting from it. So, Lord, we ask you to go out ahead of us. Be with Mindy as she prepares to fly out of Texas and meet Maureen in Seoul. I pray, Father, there would be no mishaps regarding schedule, weather, any type of calamities. That we just say ahead of time that we rebuke the enemy. He can do nothing through Christ. And we are in Christ. As we enter into this new year, Lord. May we be deeper into you than we've been before. May we be more committed. May we not just know of you. May we be able to say that this year we're going to be in you. We believe that. And we pray that in the precious, precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said. Amen. 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 God Can bless I, you. I want to say something. Of um, as as we were about to pray and we were speaking about Patty and I thought, well, that's kind of odd that we're praying a missionary prayer at the same time we're praying cancer prayer. And I was like, oh, that's what we need to pray, that Patty's cancer treatments are going to be like missionaries. Because the danger in missionaries is that they go into a place and you want them to do good, but you don't want them to do harm. And sometimes they also do harm. And so I just want to pray that those those cancer treatments are going to be like missionaries in your system and that they will only find where they need to do good and they will do no harm mm -hmm. and that your body will remain strong and well but it will find those places where it needs to do the work that's just like a missionary right yes. yeah so we yeah. just we just pray that over your entire being on the top of your head to the soles of your feet and god bless you you are dismissed happy new year